Hi friends, this is Laura, aka Lulu Sketches. Today's video is my annual Christmas rom-com review. Shout out to the one person who requested this. My Christmas rom-com reviews are by far my least popular videos on YouTube, but I enjoy them, so I'm going to continue making them regardless. I will link my past two Christmas rom-com reviews down below. Let's get into some 2019 Christmas rom-coms ranked. Last on my list is number five, A Christmas Prince, The Royal Baby. This is the third Christmas Prince movie that Netflix has made, and I think that's enough. These movies are a dumpster fire. And this is coming from someone who loves cheesy Christmas rom-coms. First of all, can we stop turning baby into a sequel? I feel like it ruins franchises. Look at Twilight. Twilight references, anyone? A Christmas Prince the Royal Baby storyline. So in this movie, the prince and Amber are now king and queen of Aldovia, and they have to sign a treaty with Pinglia, another made up kingdom, before midnight on Christmas Eve, or their two nations will go to war. But on the day of the signing, the treaty goes missing. Also, there's a curse and Amber's pregnant. The rest of the characters are just vaguely familiar. There's this one guy in the movie who is like trying to redeem himself, but I can't remember who he is or what he did wrong in the first movie. The movie begins with Amber blogging as usual. Her blog looks as boring as ever. And then Amber's out here trying to stir things up again in a family she just joined. You wish to modernize our 600 year old tradition. History isn't made by those who follow rules. Isn't that... Now for the curse. So if we don't sign the treaty by Christmas Eve, there'll be a curse on the firstborn child. That's Amber and Richard's baby. And this kid gets spooked out, starts spreading rumors about the curse. But can we talk about how immediately Amber believes it? It's a curse on your firstborn. On this baby, our baby. Our baby is cursed. But somehow what bothers me most about this movie is how the prince eats donuts. When he takes a bite of a donut in the movie, it led me to believe that he's never seen or interacted with a donut before. Like he's wearing mittens. I thought this was a possible slip up by the actor, but then he takes another bite in the exact same way. Mitten hands. Uh, the rest of the movie, there's a ghost element, a dungeon, a horse running through snow. Amber gives birth to a baby on Christmas because this kingdom only exists during Christmas time and the rest of the year it reverts back to a black hole. Moving on. Number four in the ranking is The Night Before Christmas. Netflix has blessed us with another Vanessa Hudgens with some random British guy Christmas rom-com. These stories set up. A medieval knight is transported to present day where he falls for Vanessa Hudgens and it's Christmas. The movie starts with Hot Night in the Woods where he meets an old crone. Her character name is literally Old Crone. She's played by a middle-aged woman wearing a gray wig. Could you not cast an actual old woman? Okay. The old crone seems scary at first, but the Hot Night is kind to her anyway, so she rewards him by sending him to the future to do a quest, and she tells him if he fails the quest, he shall never become a knight. Is this a reward or a punishment? Hot Knight travels to 2019, where Vanessa Hudgens hits him with her car. Close, we'll be out in force. <laughs> Vanessa believes that she gave Hot Knight a head injury because he tells her that he's a knight. And thus, as the law entails, if you hit a stranger with your car, they get to come live with you at your house. Them's the rules. Does anyone have common sense in this movie? What if he's dangerous? There she is. My first thought, if this knight is from the 1300s, pretty sure his teeth would be rotting, no? Hot Knight adjusts to 2019 by binge watching Netflix, and he learns some slang terms that nobody uses anymore in 2019. What do you think of these awesome new threads? They're straight fire. Modern technology is lit AF. And true to form, the fictional characters in this Netflix Christmas rom-com watch another 
Netflix Christmas rom-com. The best way to connect Netflix Christmas rom-coms is to have them all exist in the same universe. There's casual mention of Aldovia as an actual country. Your grandma and grandpa picked this up on their trip to Aldovia. Which is the made-up kingdom from A Christmas Prince. This movie made me wonder how much money Amazon paid Netflix to put in this much product placement. Hi. What can I do for you today? Just say, Alexa, play Christmas carols. Here's Christmas carols. Lady Alexa, play. Play Deck the Halls. Also... In the Knights from the 1300s, how did he... When Vanessa's young niece, Claire, goes missing in a blizzard, Vanessa and Hot Knight must go find her. They immediately see clues that Claire has fallen into the frozen lake. Oh no. Not the lake. But Claire has simply decided to stand in the middle of the frozen lake. Why? Is the Sword of Gryffindor down there? And of course this is a love story because there's nothing more attractive than a guy you have to clean up after. At your house. <laughs> at the grocery store. Are you feeling any better since the last time we talked? When he abandons your car on the sidewalk. <laughs> if you let a stranger with a head injury borrow your car, that one's on you. Looks like we've got some cleaning up to do. According to Oprah Magazine, Netflix's The Night Before Christmas is like Outlander. It is not. Number three on my ranking is Same Time Next Christmas. This is an ABC original Christmas rom-com that I found on Hulu, and it's starring the one and only Leah Michelle. Here is the setup. Since she was a little kid, Leah Michelle has gone to Hawaii with her family every year for Christmas. In Hawaii, she makes childhood friends with a boy named Jeff, whose family also travels to Hawaii every year for Christmas. So they see each other once a year, they're basically soulmates, but then they lose touch completely. And then there's a time jump, and basically Leah goes back to Hawaii and sees Jeff for the first time in 10 years. Jeff. Jeff is suddenly super hot because he's played by Charles Michael Davis. Yes, the hot guy from Vampire Diaries. And then this becomes a love triangle because Leah starts dating a guy who I will refer to as No Fun Businessman, played by this guy who you definitely recognize from something, but you don't remember his name. The script clues us in that this guy likes business and therefore is bad. I just had lunch with the mayor. She wants you to bid on a new municipal complex. What's the timeline? Now, I'm sending you over the parameters. Don't you want to relax? We're on vacation. Oh, I don't take vacation from my goals. No, I don't have my phone. What do you mean you don't have your phone? Whereas Jeff is clearly all about fun. At times, the writing in this movie is questionable. This isn't real. None of this is real. This is Christmas. Do you think that our families would be friends outside of this? Do you think that you and I would stand a chance? Vacation isn't real life. What if who we are on vacation is the only thing that's real? Wow, I feel really bad that he had to say that line. Look, the whole movie, we know she's gonna end up with her lifelong soulmate, Jeff. Jeff even pours his heart out to her, but Leah still gets engaged to no fun businessman, who is bad. He likes business. And then there's another time jump to a whole year later, the night before her and No Fun Businessman's wedding. Even a year later, this movie is really emphasizing how unfun and business this man still is. Why don't I have the hotel pack us a little picnic? If you really no, can. No. We got these. I should stop talking about business. Why don't we swim? Look how nice. Too much bacteria for me. Even at their wedding rehearsal dinner, he says, That was fun, huh? Got rid of all my business cards. What groom gives out business cards at his own wedding rehearsal? Everyone there already knows you or is related to you. And then this girl dumps him the night before their wedding. And even when she breaks up with him, the movie must emphasize one last time that this guy is an unfun business man. Can't close every deal, right? In conclusion, there are so many time jumps in this movie, it will give you whiplash. So will the amount of football references. Don't fumble it this time around with Olivia. He's a rookie. You're a pro. Get in there and take it to the end zone. A Hail Mary is always worth it. The game's not over until it's over. I tossed it up. She just didn't catch it. Touchdown. <laughs>
Number two on my list is A Cinderella Story, A Christmas Wish. This is a new Christmas rom-com that I found on Netflix. The story setup. A girl has dreams of becoming a singer-songwriter, but her evil stepmother and her two wicked stepsisters try to ruin everything. The girl has a day job as a singing elf, and she falls for the new Santa. This movie has one of those typical setups where a hot guy is surrounded by hot girls, but he's not interested in any of them because he wants something different. She wants you, Dominic. Skylar's not really my type. Hot guy is played by Greg Sulkin, one of those actors with one of those faces. During this opening scene, he actually meets Elf Girl, but she's not currently dressed as an elf. Next, even though Greg Sulkin is already rich, he goes to work as a mall Santa, like a commoner, just for the fun experience. While fully clad in Santa gear, he meets Elf Girl again. But they don't recognize each other because he's wearing a Santa beard and she's wearing a pink wig. Hey, have we met before? Uh, it's kind of hard to tell with the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're right. This is a Hannah Montana sh and I'm here for it. This whole film is unapologetically cheesy. It's full of dance numbers and some truly awful auto-tune. For Christmas Day! If you're wondering why this movie ranks so high on the list, it might have to do with the French Bulldog on wheels. This dog's back legs actually seem to work fine, but whatever, it's called acting. They don't even give him wheels on the DVD cover. Then, Hot Guy Santa tells Elf Girl that he wants to kiss her, but they're interrupted. I wanna kiss you. We're up! And spoiler alert, they actually never kiss this entire movie. They're about to at the end, and then she covers up the camera. So don't get your hopes up. And finally, number one on my list is called Ghosting the Spirit of Christmas. This is a freeform original Christmas rom-com that I found on Hulu. This movie easily gets number one. The acting was superb and the plot was just so fresh and entertaining. This movie stars the actress Aisha D, and the love interest, yet again, is a super hot guy from Vampire Diaries. The storyline. A girl goes on a great first date with a hot guy, but then she dies in a car accident on the way home, and the hot guy assumes that she's ghosting him, and she comes back as a ghost. It's a pun! Let's get into it. This movie is very millennial. Emojis, self-care, parabens, and the patriarchy are all mentioned within the first five minutes. You can shatter the glass ceiling on your lunch break. But it's so good. It has great romantic relationships and female friendships. The main character's best friend is played by Kamiko Glenn, who's one of my personal faves, and she is hilarious this whole movie. Also, the themes are consistent throughout this film, which is a rarity in Christmas rom-coms. Usually the plots are all over the place. It has just the right amount of cheesy Christmas magic. Sorry. <laughs> and the ending is strangely tragic in a good way. I won't spoil it because you should actually watch this one. And that's my ranking for the 2019 Christmas rom-coms that I found on Netflix and Hulu. No Hallmark ones this year because I don't have cable. Hope you hated this as much as I did. Just kidding, I love this. Either way, give it a thumbs up because again, these are my least popular videos. I need a little help here. Thanks for watching and subscribe if you wanna.